Hello, I'm Noah Huffman, an archivist at Duke University and a member of SAA's Technical Subcommittee on Encoded Archival Standards. In this short video, I'm going to cover how anyone, yes, anyone, can submit a bug report or a feature request for EAD and EAC CPF. These are the two encoding standards maintained by the Society of American Archivists. So first, why should you care about engaging with encoding standards? Um, first, archival encoding standards were developed to be used, and for the standard to be relevant, they must meet the needs of the archival community. And to that end, SAA's uh, Technical Subcommittee on Encoded Archival Standards, TSEAS, actively maintains the EAD and EAC CPF standards. Just to be clear, when I say standards, I'm referring not only to the XML schemas themselves, but also to the accompanying tag libraries. We are always accepting feature requests or bug reports related to the XML schemas and tag libraries for EAD and EAC CPF. And finally, we need your input and engagement to help us maintain and improve the standards. Okay, so generally there are two ways that you can submit bug reports or feature requests uh, for EAD and EAC CPF. The first option is to use a web form that's available on the SAA website. Uh, there's a link to that uh, site here on the slide. You can also find this form on the SAA web pages for each standard, as well as on the official pages for each standard. So the EAD standard is officially maintained by the Library of Congress, and EAC CPF is officially maintained by uh, Staatsbibliothek uh, zu Berlin. The second option for submitting um, an issue is to do it directly in the GitHub repository for each standard. There are links to those uh, appropriate repositories on the slide here. GitHub is the site that TSEAS uses to maintain the XML schemas and the, and the tag libraries. If you want to submit an issue directly in GitHub, um, you'll need a GitHub user account. GitHub accounts are free and easy to create. Whichever option you choose, uh, you'll need to answer a standard set of questions about the feature request or bug report. Also know that feedback submitted via the first option, via the SAA web form, will eventually be converted to a GitHub issue for easier tracking, and more on this in a bit. Okay, so let's walk through a sample feature request. This is a screenshot of what you'll see if you use the report and issue form on the SAA website. Again, there's a link to that form on the previous slide. First, you'll need to provide some information about yourself, so your name and email are required. Um, then you'll need to choose a category um, for your particular issue. So in this example, we've chosen EAD schema. You'll provide a brief description of the issue, provide some additional details. For example, how is the current behavior of the schema different than what you'd expect or what you'd prefer to see? You can also uh, provide a suggested solution. So how should we implement the suggested feature or bug fix that you are offering? For bugs, it's really helpful to include um, steps for reproducing that bug. So explain how you encountered it. Um, links to live examples or um, code snippets are also helpful here. You can provide some context. So how does this issue affect you or your organization? What's your particular use case that's not being met? How might this change benefit others? Um, the most compelling feature requests are those that would benefit others in the community more broadly and ones that don't just address a narrow use case in your particular institution. Finally, you can, uh, sometimes it can be helpful to provide information about um, your particular environment. So for example, what version of the standard are you using? Or what application are you using to create, manage, or interact with the standard? If you're submitting directly in GitHub, um, you'll likely see something like this, a uh, GitHub issue template. You'll notice that this form looks slightly different than the web form that we saw on the previous slide, but it still includes all of the same fields that we just covered. 
So what happens after you submit a bug report or a feature request? So first, members of the TA, uh, TSEAS subcommittee will review the request and then log that issue uh, in GitHub with attribution. Then the committee will further consider uh, the issue and also um, seek input from the larger community. If you want to learn more about this review process, um, you can see a link at the bottom of the slide here. So after the issue is logged in GitHub, most likely the sub team that's charged with oversight of the relevant standard will discuss the issue at their next meeting. So for example, EAD related issues will get kicked to the EAD sub team and EAC CPF issues to the EAC sub team, et cetera, et cetera. Um, TSEAS may follow up with you to seek additional information or clarification about the issue you've submitted. They may also solicit additional feedback from the larger community for some issues. And then finally, after discussion and any community um, input, TSEAS will make a decision as to whether or not to accept, reject, or possibly table the issue for future consideration. So here's a screenshot showing a recent example of how one issue moved through this process. So here, an archivist at the Library of Congress noticed that C12 elements were not validating in the EAD3 schema. And so they submitted a bug report using the SAA web form that we saw earlier. TSEAS received the web form and then logged the issue in GitHub, and that's what you see here. Um, you can find these issues if you go to the EAD3 repository in GitHub and then click on the issues tab uh, that you see at the top where the red arrow is indicating here at the top. You'll, on this page, you'll see open issues, so uh, unresolved issues as well as closed issues. So those that may have been resolved already. So if you click on any particular issue, uh, this is what you'll see. You'll see all of the information that was originally submitted as well as any discussion of that issue. One important thing to note is that anyone with a GitHub account can subscribe to watch or follow conversation of an issue. Um, you'll see our red arrow at the bottom right here showing you the link that you can click to subscribe to an issue. If you subscribe, um, you'll get an email notification whenever anyone comments on that issue or whenever there is any other activity uh, related to that issue, such as when it's resolved. Anyone with a GitHub account can also comment on an issue, and all comments are logged in a continuous conversation thread, um, like the one you see here on the right of the screen. TSEAS encourages folks to watch and comment on any issues that are important to them. In this example, you can see that the committee discussed this particular issue, decided it was actually a bug, assigned it to the appropriate sub team to fix and then that fix was incorporated in a subs subsequent minor revision to EAD3. A few words about the revision process for EAS standards. Um, most likely we'll do a separate um, web tutorial um, video on this subject but, but last year the committee formalized a rolling revision cycle for minor revisions to E83, and you can see a flowchart of how that revision cycle is supposed to work on the right. Um, the idea is to have annual revision cycle with predictable processes, deadlines, and release dates. So issues submitted and approved, if they're minor revisions, uh, will hopefully be rolled into annual minor releases of EAD. Generally, this minor revision release cycle is an effort to be more nimble and transparent in responding to community input. So thanks again on behalf of TSEAS, particularly the outreach subteam. And again, we want to empower you to engage with the standards that you use. So please reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks.